Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here with another edition of the Untold Stories. This one's going to be a little different. This one's going to be the 10 things Larry Lawton needs in prison. So I'm going to show you some stuff, tell you about some stuff, that, uh, things we used in prison and that every good convict needs. First of all, every good convict needs this. What is this? This, ladies and gentlemen, is a part of a shank. What we would do is we would get a bolt or a screw out of a wall, going into a fence, into a wall, wherever you can get this. This would be worth a lot of money in prison. This is worth what we call books of stamps. And obviously, books of stamps is money. One book of stamps, $5. In prison, this shank could go for $50 which is 10 books of stamps or more. Some people would get them out of the CMS and then they would make wooden handles and they would have a shank. So it is a must to have. If you're a real convict, you are gonna have something to defend yourself. And in the prisons I went to, maximum security prisons, you need stuff. It's as simple as that. Without that, you could be in trouble. As I said, this has actually saved my life. Well, what do you need with this? Your second item you need is, and I'm gonna label this, a suitcase. And it's not the suitcase you're thinking. It's not the kind you carry on an airport. This is a suitcase that you insert in your rectum and you hide this to get through the various metal detectors in prison. How does a suitcase work? Well, an essential item is a suitcase to do what with? One to carry your shank. You can put your shank in here. It's inserted in your rectum. And then when you need it on the yard, you take this out, you pop that right out. And the reason you put a tape on the end of a toothbrush holder. This is a toothbrush holder, one half of a toothbrush holder they sell on the commissary. So what you would do is you would get this, you take half of it, you can then use this mostly to hide drugs. Most people would suitcase their drugs so they don't lose them in a shakedown. Or if they're dealing the drugs on the yard, they want them somewhere, they will actually step behind a wall or into a bathroom, take it out, obviously have their drugs, give it to the person, insert it back in their rectum. Obviously, this might be a little dirty, but the drugs in it are not. You also put the tape on the one end because I actually uh, heard of a story of a person putting something in their rectum, put it the wrong way. The actual shank came out of this tube and it ripped up his intestines in prison. So that is possible. So the good convict will have a very good suitcase and in their suitcase will be whatever they wanna hide. You can put a kite in there, or you could put a, a kite, which is a note from prison to prison. You could either do that, or you could do a shank, or you can do drugs. That's the three major things you're gonna suitcase around a prison. So it's gonna happen, it is there, and it's people use it, it's what it is. And it's an essential item. If you're a convict, you'll have some people say, I never did that. A lot of people haven't. But convicts had to do what they had to do. So it's an essential item in prison. My next item, and you're looking at it and you're gonna say, what are these? They're styrofoam cups. They give you these cups through in the hole when they give you the, uh, your jungle juice is what it's called. And they would put it on the shoot door. And uh, we're showing a picture right now of a shoot door. That's the door in a that opens up in prison and a per, they put the uh, food tray on it or they put these two drinks on it. You take them away, then the tray comes on it. You pull your tray in your cell, you eat in your cell and you put your tray back out there. Well, you need these and I'll tell you why. These are used for a lot of things. As you notice, this one has a hole in it. The, the idea of this cup right here would be you would put your speakers right in here and the sound coming out would be great. You have two speakers on one end and you literally have a stereo system 
in yourself. And believe it or not, it would actually play pretty good. The sound percussion off of that is actually pretty good. You'd be surprised, but it is. And everybody used to keep a stack of these styrofoam cups. Some people use them from, for bad reasons. Uh, I talked about in one of my videos about what the guards would get douched. And what I mean by that is when they come around for what they call the cell checks, if you're in the hole, every week the mucky mucks, the ward and the associate ward and the captain, the unit managers, case managers would come around the prison in the cell to cell and it used to piss me off. Because here they would come up to one cell and they'd say, how you doing? How do you think I'm doing? I'm in the hole. Get out of here. That's what I used to tell them. And they'd come in, knock on the door. How you doing? What do you mean I'm doing? I'm in the hole. I was in the hole for 11 straight months. You start going crazy. And they're supposed to do a lot of things in prison. They don't do. But a central item would be this. Why do you have this? Well, I've seen guys put piss and shit in this and make a concoction. They would make this concoction that would, they'd let it sit for days in that cup. And if they didn't like a guard or somebody uh, important in the prison during when they open that chute door, whether it's to say cuff up, open up the chute to take you out to medical or during chow call or mail call, uh, I've seen people go crazy, come out the chute with their arm and throw it right on the guards and it would stink up the whole entire tier. It was really bad. And I'll tell you what, it's something that, you know, I, I smell it to this day. It, it, it just, ooh, I mean, it gives me the willies right now. It really does, it's just that bad. Think of the worst thing you ever smelled and it's 10 times worse. That's how bad it was. So I never did that. I thought that was disgusting, but people did do that and I've witnessed it all. But an item to have, and I use them for, is speakers. Believe it or not, these are great speakers in prison. Another item is very important to have. Back when I was in, we used to sell cigarettes. They used to sell cigarettes. Now they don't. But believe it or not, you can get them. A carton of cigarettes in prison goes for $1,000 today. I am in contact with people in various prisons around the United States and a carton of cigarettes goes for a thousand dollars think of what i just said a thousand dollars one hundred dollars a pack people would get this take a cigarette out and they'd actually roll them up into maybe five or six cigarettes or pin cigarettes they would call them and they would actually sell them around the unit and why people bought cigarette whether they use cigarettes or not is because the cellophane on the top of a cigarette pack can be used to light a cigarette or light a fire and you use batteries to do that so that's very important and you always had essentially something of that nature in your cell another item we had everybody had it is a razor blade just a razor blade like that simple as that a little razor blade that you cut up your your uh, garlic you cut up your pencil you do whatever else you need you use a razor blade you would be surprised on what you use a razor blade for in prison it, it's amazing I, I think about it today whenever i want something sharp or I need a razor blade to open a box or do something, I always think of prison because the first thing we did when we were in prison and you were in the hole or you were in your own prison, you would get a razor to shave. In the hole, they gave you a razor every other day or three times a week, sometimes twice a week. They would give you a razor to shave. Well, the guard comes up to your cell, says, do you guys want to want to shave? Hey, Lot, you want to shave? Yeah, I want my razor. He writes it down that he gives you the razor, he opens the chute door, he passes you the razor. You have your razor now. You actually shave. After you shave, you take it apart with the two little things in the back of the razor. You take this off, you take the razor out, 
you put a piece of glossy paper from a magazine like GQ or uh, uh, Men's FM magazine. All of those magazines, they have uh, very glassy articles or very uh, uh, advertising pages like Giorgi Armani would give uh, actual, this was great too, we used to take the magazine and they used to have cologne in those pieces of paper. It was a sample of a smell of a cologne. And so we would actually rip that out and keep those long strips because if you open that strip, it smells. So we used to take them and rub them on our visiting outfits so you'd smell good for your visitor. And as crazy as that sounded, it actually worked. And it was amazing because in there, we'd also get the glossy pages of an advertisement and we'd put that back inside here, put this back right on, and all of a sudden, the guard would get the razor back. He's got the gloss in there, so he can't see, he thinks it's a razor. He looks at it and he throws it in the trash and he checks you off. In the meantime, you have a razor. I used to do that every time they did razors, so I'd always have extra razors all over the prison cell. And I did that for a number of reasons. They usually sharpen pencils or cut something. I've used these razors. The prison tried to stop us in the hole from using a kite. A kite is a string from a, a bed sheet or uh, we'd flatten out a toothpaste and that would be the weight on the end of it. We would tie that to a long piece of sheet we'd rip very thin and we'd shoot that down the hall and it would go down to a couple of cells. Another guy would shoot his out there and he'd pull yours in and now you have a back and forth line so you can pass books or pass whatever in prison and it's very common. It's called uh, shooting a kite. So what we would do was is have razor blades and if a guy needed a uh, razor, you'd send it to him. So what does the prison do? They come up with this idea, let's stop the inmates from shooting kites. How can they do that? Well, under the door, we had a space about that big, maybe an inch and a half under the door, the gap under every door. So what does the prison do? They come in and they put down on the doors a piece of rubber across so they can open the doors back and forth but there's no more gap under the under the door. So what do the inmates do? We take our trusty razor, lay on our backs, and literally cut that rubber all the way. Start it, rip it, rip it, until we rip that rubber off the door. And it went from cell to cell, and you would end up whatever cell you went in. If you saw one when they did it, they found out it was really useless to do that for us. I mean, why do it? It didn't matter. It didn't help. It, it, we cut them. They put them on. It was just a waste of time and money for them. And it's just what they did. Couldn't help that. Razor blades are one of those little items you don't realize, but you need. Your next item, always to have. At one time, they used to sell literally a razor set or a shaving set on the commissaries. I was in Coleman in 1999. That's uh, Federal Institution Coleman in Central Florida, the biggest federal prison complex in the United States with approximately 10,000 inmates, females, high security, medium security, low security, and female, and camp. So they used to sell a razor off the, off the commissary, and it was quite expensive. Uh, they were about 100 and something bucks. But I would have that, and the first thing you have that for is what? Your motor. You used to break it open and use a motor for various reasons. I'm gonna show that in a tattoo gun. But we had a, a razor and it would be, you'd take it apart very carefully. And the reason you took it apart very carefully is so you could use all the parts in it. Then they stopped selling them on the yard, but we used to then steal the motors from either a pencil sharpener, a uh, typewriter, something of that nature. Another great item to have in prison was this. 
And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a tattoo gun. You take a toothbrush, a state-issued toothbrush, you then heat it and you bend it into an L. Then you take the barrel of a pencil or a pen right here, you take out the guts, and that's your barrel. You take your motor and you put it over here and this goes this way. You take a guitar string and you run the guitar string through this down in here and have a sharp point. And now you put batteries on it and you have a tattoo gun that will go all over your body. I've done them, I made them, I've actually made my own tattoos. So getting back to the fun stuff in prison and the must haves. So you totally need that. You need your headphones. Headphones come with the transistor radios you buy. They're for various reasons. You could uh, put them in here, use them at all times. A radio is your savior. If you had the money and radios, a transistor AM FM radio was going for about $100. $100. And this is in the 19, end of the 90s and the early 2000s. And that's all you could have. There's no tape players and DVD players. <laughs> I have people say, hey, listen, didn't you have like a a, a, a player for a, uh, uh, what's it called? Like a, a DVD or something you could download music. I says, I don't know what prison you're in, but we didn't get that in the prisons I was in. You know, everybody asks me about books. I have my own book. We all know that. And I'm an avid reader and an avid writer. Books are just so important to have to keep your sanity. And you want to talk a must-have. One, one of the big reasons is you keep a razor blade right in there. You can barely see it. That's one way to keep a razor. You also can cut this along here. You cut this, you stiff the razor blade in there, you put a little toothpaste. Voila! It seals, they would never know it, and you could put drugs, or you could put anything you want in the crease of a book. What they were doing is they were taking these covers off. They were literally cutting down a quarter inch in the whole slot and making a spot to hide drugs. It was one of the better spots in prison to hide something. Yes, guards know, they know everything we do, but can they check every single book in everybody? I doubt it very hard to do. The most important thing you need in prison while you're surviving in prison is your brain. You know, people ask me all the time, hey, Larry, how did you survive in prison? All those, how did you survive in those maximum security prisons? I survived maximum security prison because of this, not because of this. Yes, it helps to be a pretty big guy, strong guy, but this means absolutely nothing. It was right here. If you don't have the brains to survive, if you don't have the communication skills to get along, you could have a really rough time in prison. Just the way it is, you will have a really rough time. And it's sad to see what goes on in prison. And uh, it, it, it breaks my heart. But those are the uh, essential things you need in prison. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we're gonna keep doing videos. I'm gonna do more and more, getting them together, showing you stuff in prison and I want you to enjoy it. Listen, give us your comments. I'm going to be doing one. Thanks for all the comments you're giving me about your past crimes. I'm going to be commenting on them. That's going to be a lot of fun. This has been fun showing you the 10 or 9 most important things you need while you're in prison. If you don't have them, you're going to do rougher time than I did. And I did some pretty rough time. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. Stay strong. Grab my book. Do whatever you can. Enjoy. Thanks for your support. You guys know. Please listen to whatever your health officials are saying. Uh, we, I do that, and I want everybody to do that. Check all our stuff in the links below. Instagram, pictures, everything. Listen, watch a commercial for us. That helps as well. People ask me, what can we do? Hey, watch through a couple of commercials. I think that helps as well. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great day. Much love. Much respect. Have a great one. Larry Lawton out.